Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we're going to be talking about oil. Specifically, how should we spend it? So your oil is a bit of a unique resource in that you have a bunch of PMs for it. All the PMs are really good and you cannot possibly turn on all the PMs at once and this raises the sort of question, how do we decide which one to spend it on? Okay. For this video, we're going to be largely relying on the spreadsheet to do our thinking for us. Um, we're not going to consult the spreadsheet too much throughout the video, but I just wanted to show and explain the logic here. Uh, so for electric engines, we have a net output. This is the uh, value of its output, uh, the base cost of all the goods, minus the values of the input. In this, from this, we get the net. We also have this for diesel engines, which uses oil. In order to get the marginal value per oil used, we take the difference between diesel engines and electric engines and divide it by the total number of oil used. In the case of diesel engines, it has a marginal value of 16 uh, per oil used. Um, so let's jump into it and talk about it from here. So for the most part, there are some labor saving PMs uh, that use oil, but you will not want to use that. Of them, the most efficient one is the furniture. So if you have to turn on some labor saving or you just want to increase demand for oil in particular, and you happen to have assembly lines, um, this will be the best one to turn on. But for the most part, don't do that. Now we're not going to talk about all the bad PMs. Instead, we're just going to talk about the good ones. And of the good ones, the worst good one is going to be houseware plastics. Uh, notably, this takes 25 oil, which is one of the bigger numbers in terms of inputs per oil, for oil. And so this was, uh, in particular, it's good for when the oil price is extremely depressed and you wanna create demand for oil, this is gonna be useful. Also, late in the game, the lead is an input for glass. Lead often becomes very expensive. And so while this only has a value added of 24 per oil, it will overperform relative to that score of 24 because lead often gets very expensive and this can ease your demand for lead um, in a very efficient way for just increasing glass by a huge amount. You notice it's more than a 50% increase from 70 to this 110, which is going to be, you know, kind of a big deal. Another thing you can do, while well, this is kind of outside the scope of the video, is decrease uh, to prioritize glass production. But, uh, score of 24. Next up, we have vacuum canning. And let's just quickly talk about vacuum canning. So here we have, over here to the left, we are going to have plastics down here, which is a tier four tech. Vacuum canning is a tier three tech, and it is kind of the first tech you have that you really want to use that is going to create demand for oil. Um, vacuum canning has an efficiency per oil of 60. Uh, so for each oil you use, you get a value added of 60. And let's find the tech. And so it's going catenaries to vacuum canning, notably only five oil per each. Um, but this has a quite a big uh, pronounced effect in terms of value added. You will generally want to turn on vacuum canning and never turn it off. Uh, turn it on as soon as you can, as soon as you have the oil to support it, never turn it off. Next up, we have two military uh, PMs, which means the industries can't get that huge. And these uh, are not very efficient industries to begin with. You just genuinely just don't want to run a shortage. And that's just the raw airplanes, just without producing the tanks and also uh, bolt action rifles. Notably, bolt action rifles will generally be pretty profitable if uh, your guns are more expensive than your cannons. It will not be profitable if the reverse is the case, which is gonna be the case depending on your PMs. Both of these have a value added per oil of 70. Um, next up, we have five that are all kind of together, and that is in the rural industries. Um, condensing pump, not condensing pump engine, diesel pump uh, is going to be extraordinarily efficient. On all of these, it is just five. Uh, the least efficient uh, is going to be the uh, iron and lead mines with a value added of 130. Notably, it's basically double the last one, a value added of 130 uh, per oil, uh, each oil, uh, it's going to go from, you know, 60 to 70 in terms of the output and you are swapping the coal, uh, for the oil. So it will ease your coal needs. And notably, this is more value worth of coal than it is in oil, but oil is a much more scarce resource. And so you will eventually hit shortages. And so you will always want to be on diesel pump on these mines. If you can be, uh, or if you can support the oil, which you really want to try and support the oil but for 130 for iron and lead. Next up, we have coal, uh, which has a value added of 140 per oil. It's very much similar, uh, but instead we don't have this increase in uh, 
So uh, coal is an interesting one because uh, on atmospheric engine pump and condensing engine pump, notably on the other ones, an input is coal. Obviously, we cannot increase the coal. And so instead of increasing from 60 to 70 for this one, we increase from 60 to 90, but we do not lose uh, an input of coal. But uh, generally speaking, coal will often be more efficient in a lot of ways. Um, but here we go. It's 140 per each uh, you add. And finally, uh, we have sulfur and gold. Now, gold is a bit of an interesting one. You will generally want to always be on diesel pump, but the value of each unit of gold is 100. Uh, and so this is how stuff's calculated, but this is not the proper way to look at it because it gives you minting. And this minting will be better earlier on in the game, and it will fall off a little bit late game, but it's still going to be really powerful. And this will be the number one priority to be turned on. It will be the diesel pump and the minting uh, for the gold mines. But we also have the sulfur mine which again is going to use five oil each but these are both both the gold and the sulfur in particular the sulfur is the one that matters 250 added value per oil and so there's no excuse even if the sulfur is dirt cheap you still want to be on diesel pump um it's way way more efficient it's nearly double the efficiency of the next most efficient thing which is coal and if you kind of group coal lead and iron all together it's like quadruple the next thing which is the airplanes and the bolt action rifles and so this has an output of uh 250 per oil and notably instead of increasing from 60 to 70 it increases from 60 to 80 and sulfur is more expensive in terms of the base price um than uh both lead and uh iron and coal um, so this is just something to keep in mind, uh, just very quickly run through it again, uh, or so I kind of summarize, uh, you do not want to really use the labor saving PMs. If you are going to use the labor saving PM, the very, very best one is going to be the furniture manufacturers for assembly lines, um, of the, uh, non labor saving PMs in particular, plastics is good for driving demand early. Um, you'll notice condensing engine pump while it is the most efficient, or sorry, not condensing, uh, diesel engine, while it is the most efficient, is uh, very, very late game tech. Plastics will actually be extremely good when you have a lot of oil, but you can't spend it. Um, it notably ha demands 25 oil per level and has an output of 24 value added per level. Next up, we have vacuum canning, which adds 60 per level, and then bolt of rifles and airplanes, which adds 70 per level, and then iron and lead, which add 130 per level, and then coal, 140 per level, and sulfur and gold, 250 per level. I hope this video was useful. Uh, if you liked it, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It does help out, and have a good day.